y'all, this is Texas Gaming Industries here, and welcome to episode 26, part 17 of my Let's Play of Transport Fever 2. In the previous episode, it turns out that our new planes are basically following the same pattern as the one that we used to get from, from London all the way to Australia by airport hopping. So basically, we can't even use that airplane. But I've just recently put in some mods that will probably fix this problem. As in this episode, we're hopefully going to finally get this mission finished, once and for all. So, first things first, all these airplanes are going to go, because one of the mods I installed is All Vehicles 1850, meaning, meaning every single vehicle that's available is now unlocked. Even though these planes were designed way after, like the Douglas DC-3 and 4, as well as some other airplanes. However, I also added some of these mods. These flying saucers. I am not joking. These are flying saucers. So, we could at least use one of them to carry mail all the way over from London to Australia. But look at how much these cost! This one costs only 16, but this one costs 90, 324, and 1.44 billion credits! Oh my gosh! And these planes can go at super wicked high speeds. Like, this could go over 850 miles an hour. That's ludicrous. But, if it means getting our mail delivered across to Australia in much faster time, I won't mind using it at all. However, I feel like we should actually use something a little bigger. We can carry 50 units on this one, but that will cost over 90 billion. But I'm pretty sure once that mail is finally delivered to Australia, we can basically sell it off and get something else. That means we'll have to take out a lot of more money to basically buy this thing. I have a feeling we'll have to be at 1.10 billion credits. Or not. Let's buy it and put it to work on line 1. And to make sure that it's time for the mail to be fully loaded, it's going to basically put an infinite wait time. And there it is. Oh my gosh. And I thought that plane that we had in the in episode 3 of this, well, campaign was basically big. No wait, not episode 3, episode 2. But this is different. This thing is massive. It does, it looks so weird, but this thing could go over 2,000 miles an hour. That's basically more than the speed of sound. We're having speed of sound airplanes in the 1920s. And oh my god! And it even makes the UFO sound effect, that's amazing! <laughs> Okay, okay, I'm gonna be honest, I'm really just basically doing this one so it will be easier for my mail to get there because I am not waiting forever for these deliveries of uh, mail to be taken off by small planes and as well as by airplanes that are just super, super slow, require a lot of airport hopping. Which means that I'll have to delete several of these lines, I believe. The ones that I actually set up. But actually, in reality, I'm pretty sure they'll be fine. No, anyway. All it's to do now is waiting patiently to pick up air, to pick up mail. Might as well turn this or truck around to pick up to drop off the mail. I wish. Let's break here some fuel to keep the airport up. But it's gonna actually be a little while before we finally get this plane, well, this UFO filled to the brim with mail. So I'm actually going to cut this video right here, and I'll see you all in just a bit once this UFO is fully loaded with mail and flying ludic ludicrously to Australia. So I'll see you all in just a bit. And we're back. Now with the UFO fully loaded with mail, this plane can now finally take off and head straight for, well, Darwin. Or Darwin, basically. But we're going to actually follow this crazy flying saucer all the way there. Of 
course it just needs to take off and get proper space. And I believe this plane now can basically fly a lot faster. Although I can see the little wheels underneath it. However, we are only able to travel at around 230-ish miles, mostly. I don't know why, but... At least, however, this plane will be able to fly a lot faster. Plus, with over 50 units of mail, we should be able to complete this particular contract here in Port Darwin. And, at the same time, the Port Darwin Aerodrome is now waiting to pick up and has basically mail bound for London waiting. So our airmail business can now deliver mail from Port D London to Port Darwin and take mail from Port Darwin back to London. Thankfully, some of the town buildings close by are actually have buildings that need mail to London. But it won't be too long before our little uh, UFO lands down. We are basically flying, passing the town of Brunel, and then passing Bacasasar before finally landing down in Port Darwin. The mail will then be transferred to these trucks. I should at least add a small depot to for the mail that's coming in. I should add some of that. And add some of this as well, just in case, as we could eventually get much bigger aircraft, much more bigger machines that deliver the mail. And these buildings can basically, well, store the mail that's brought in. Anyways, our... Where is our... Ah! Just nearing Port Darwin now. But I'm pretty sure a lot of people will be making tons of sci-fi novels now, after finding out there is, in fact, real-life UFOs. Of course, since it doesn't fly in like a normal airplane, it will have it will make a quick turnaround and land at the far end of the aerodrome's runway. That actually was quite smooth. I'm surprised. All right, it's landed, and now it will just drop off the mail, pick up this mail that's located here at the aerodrome cargo station, and then take it back to London. 86.2 million credits! This is going to be very, very profitable. And plus, with our trucks, might as well clone an extra one to carry more mail. I'm happy to say that we're going to basically make a nice killing off of these deliveries. There it goes! <laughs> Alright. Our next truck will come in to pick up the mail and drop it off into town. Alright! Australia and Britain have never been closer together. Your progress has not gone unnoticed. Other parts of the British Empire now also want a fast connection with the capital. For your last task, establish airmail services to Ceylon, Aden and Brunei as well. Supply all these towns, as well as Port Darwin, with at least 15 units of mail from London. Alright, final task. We gotta supply loads of mail to Simon, Aiden, and Brunel by just supplying everything by delivering the mail. This won't be too difficult, as now... I mean, the only thing we just need to do is just deliver the mail in. However, though, this is not going to be easy. We need to... Su well, actually, it is going to be easier, because here's the thing. These UFOs are not limited by the airplanes, I believe. Actually, 
No. All airplanes are limited basically based on what happened with the first planes. As we remember, the last time we tried taking off with these airplanes, we could not basically take off because there was not any materials brought in. That basically means that we have to supply the airfield with supplies. Ugh. Another pointless and needed task. But, however, we can at least set up every station around here, though. We just have to deliver some fuel, tools, and food to these airports, which won't be too difficult. In fact, this could actually work in a bit of a nice favor, because there are some airports already constructed. If I could just place them down here, and just deliver oil to this one here in Calcutta, and provide fuel here, that should take care of the fuel. But we'll need food as well. Food can be processed here at this food process you find in Ragoon, and then delivered in by ship to Calcutta. Well, no, not to Calcutta, to Colombo. Of course, it needs to be close enough for the factory to face. Dang it, it's too it's too far. Hmm. Well, I could basically set up another delivery here. I actually could set up another, well, dockside on the other end of this uh, food processing plant to basically deliver loads of food from there. Collision. Oh my gosh. Seriously, game? Ugh. Alright. That'll work. Pick up food from the video, transfer, and take it to here. We'll need to also deliver tools. Hmm. We could also deliver tools from the Saigon port as well. I'll have to expand this. I have to take out another loan. But at least, however, we could also place down this large dock on this port to allow a ship to bring in loads of lumber and then just leave the other two for delivery, picking up tools and taking them to their respective destinations. Let's see. Change this to platform two. All right. We got food, food, fuel, food, and tools to be delivered to Simo. Now then, let's see. The other airfield that needs to be taken care of is eight. This is located in the Middle East. We'll need to get mail delivered there from the airfield, so we'll have to place down another cargo station for the planes to pick it up. Alright. Not the smoothest, but at least it looks okay. And then... I'll need to place down a truck to, uh, to unload the mail. I'll have to also supply this airport with food, fuel, and tools. Looks like I'll have to restart my Middle Eastern Railroad operations. So, I believe it was 240 meters. Let's see. If I could just squeeze this station right next to the road. There we go. Not the best, but at least, however, it'll allow us to reuse the station for another task. But of course, I gotta get rid of these tracks, of course, and replace down the vanilla, and replace the vanilla track with the, with the modded track. 
Also, I think we are able to now use this new bridge. I'm not so sure. Let's see. Oh! Now I can. I could basically use different types of girders. Make tons of different bridges. That's, that's sweet. But I'm just fine with the bridges we have already anyways. But of course I have to basically extend the track work from this to the main line. Alright. With this railhead installed, we can at least deliver tools, food, and fuel here. One thing's for sure, we gotta restart our operations here in the Middle East. Since we're only gonna be focusing on filling up the airfield, we're only taking care of the bare essentials. We'll have one train deliver oil to here, pick up refined oil and deliver to Tehran Springs, while Tehran Sidings have a full have a full load of uh, fuel, well, refined oil. Then have another train to pick up the loads of fuel and take it down to the airfield here. Alright, that should take care of the fuel train. Now we've got to deliver tools. Which is simple, because since this is still producing steel, we can just pick up the steel from the, from the mill at the steel mill at uh, Calcutta. No, Delhi. Jeez, I'm getting so many names mixed up. And, oh, right. And connect this station here at Tehran Halt. Where then we can pick up the tools from the factory and deliver them down to here. That should take care of the tools and fuel, but now we need to deliver food. Fortunately, we can pick up loads of food here, and using the Y track, we can deliver the food to here at Aiden Exchange. But that means we'll have to restart delivering fish as well from uh, Athens, Greece, to Tunis. Of a full load, 10 minutes, unload the fish. While line 47 will pick up only food and drop it off. Same with tools. It's only picking up tools and dropping them off. This is also picking up loads of steel, no coal or iron ore. Dropping them off. Let's see. To run sightings, it's basically only picking up fuel. And this one is only picking up refined oil. And it's only dropping off there. With that in mind, we can now acquire some new trains to operate on these new sections of track. Let's see. Now, the only exception to the vehicles is I'm only using the vehicles that we had previously. So, we are not going to basically use any of the modern steam engines that have come later on in the game. We're going to be using the ones that we have already seen in the game. Hmm, 55 miles an hour compared to 50. You know, I feel like these Fillmore and Western consolidations actually do a pretty good job. So, with that in mind, I'll grab some tanker cars to pick up the loads of oil, fuel, and refined oil, and take them to their respective destinations. Of course, I'll need a caboose. 67.1 million credits. All right. You go pick up the oil from the oil fields. You pick up the refined oil. And you deliver fuel to the airfield.
I'll get another 280. And basically get, let's see, hmm, 60, 50. Hmm. Oh, let's see. Okay. This can go 50, but these can actually go 60. They have a much more capacity than these, but I think it's just fine doing these types of cargo anyway. I'll get another caboose to add to this train to pick up the steel, which is 22.4 million credits. Which I believe is line 44, I believe, if I can find it. Nope, line 45. Oh! I didn't know you could actually change the color of the locomotive's roof and side trim. That's actually pretty cool. Anyway, let's get the Baldwin 280 again and acquire... Actually, let's make a mixed train. Let's actually make it with a mix of box cars and flat cars to carry the tools. All right, that looks good. I'll get another caboose. That will basically be about 23.2 million credits. Hopefully these, these mail deliveries will actually be able to repay my deficits that I've been accumulating for my business. Let's see. Line 46 to pick up loads of tools and deliver them to their respective destination. And finally, we'll need to get a train to pick up loads of food. We'll get another Baldwin Consolidation and several of these Tiffany Coastery refrigeration cars. We'll carry a capacity of about uh, 400 units of food. And use another caboose on the rear end that will cost me about 26.4 million, I believe. No, 26.7 million credits. I'll buy that, and put it to work on the new service supplying food to the airfield. Then we've got to get started on a service supplying food for to news. Well, for delivering loads of fish. This ship does not have the capacity of carrying fish. However, the Daruna Castle does. Only 200 units, but that is totally fine. As long as the trips and trains are able to pick up their respective cargoes, I don't mind at all. Alright, our new trains are set up, but now we need to set up a new set up some new routes in the towns as well to deliver the mail into town. We'll just call these mail A and mail B and C. We'll basically focus on the middle eastern town of Aiden first for these mail deliveries, but then we also got to work on delivering mail in basically Calcutta. Once this autosave goes away, that is.
but I'm pretty sure once these airports are fully stocked and supplied, we should basically be finished with this mission. Mail A, mail B, and then we need to basically also supply the airfield here in Brunei, which we'll take care of in the next episode. So, if you enjoyed this episode of my Let's Play Transport Fever 2, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to Texas Gaming Industries for new video uploads every Friday or Saturday, depending on my on-site schedule. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye!